That same poll had political outsider Vivek Ramaswamy at 5 percent. You see it there. He's tying the former vice president, Mike Pence. He's ahead of Nikki Haley and way ahead of Asa Hutchinson, who's down at one point. Ramaswamy's platform centers around combating wokeism and providing a fresh voice in the Republican Party. Over the weekend, this moment between Vivek and NBC host Chuck Todd went viral. You'll see why. Are you confident that you know that gender uh, is uh, as binary as you're describing it? Are you confident that I it am. isn't a spectrum? I uh, am. Do you know I, this as a scientist? Well, there's, there's two X chromosomes. If you're a woman, an X and a Y, that means there's you're a man. There's a lot of scientific research, research out there. There's a lot of scientific research out there that says gender is a spectrum. Chuck, I, I respectfully disagree. Gender dysphoria for most of our history, all the way through the DSM-5, has been characterized as a mental health disorder. And I don't think it's compassionate to affirm that. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy joins us now. Oh, he, he brought some friends with him. Vivek, good to see you. Um, you know, there was quite a moment there, quite a, quite a thing to see Chuck Todd, you know, saying something that's so outrageous, would have been so outrageous just a few years ago. Yes. So, look, I think that Chuck Todd is emblematic of actually the modern view of the left, that there is no objective truth. But if you think about this, the sex of the person you're attracted to, they said for the longest time, is hardwired on the day you're born. Yet now they say your own gender is completely fluid over the course of your life. These two things can't make sense at the same time unless you're subscribing to a secular cult. That's what it is. And so you know what, they invoked the science. Well, I taught them the science. Two X chromosomes means you're a woman, and X and a Y means you're a man. That's a hard fact, and the beautiful thing about facts is that they overcome these toxic ideologies. Yeah, I'm glad they do, because sometimes I feel like we're losing our mind. I want to turn, I want to talk about immigration here for a second. You, you have a sea of migrants waiting just on the other side of the Rio Grande, right across the border, waiting for the end of Title 42 next week. Uh, Biden signing an executive order calling up reserve troops, planning to send 1,500 to the Mexican border uh, to uh, kind of account for the surge. I, you know, a move like that, I thought, was, was fascist just a few years ago. Why is Biden doing this? Well, the funny thing is Biden's moving 1,500 troops to the border, but actually he's just said they're going to be performing administrative functions. So they're not actually even using them to secure the border. Sure. What I've said is as U.S. president, we would not just build the wall, but actually send an order of magnitude more troops to actually end that illegal immigration problem. That's what we need to do at the southern border without apology. That is not racist or xenophobic. That is what it means to be American, that we actually believe in that rule of law, Rob. Yeah, well said. I got to ask one. I got to ask one final question. A new report from a watchdog called Open the Books stating the IRS has been stocking up on weapons, ammunition and combat gear to the tune of ten million dollars since 2020. Um, you know, they, they, they call this crazy for thinking that the IRS was going to be coming after, uh, you know, Americans of all stripes, middle class and everyone else. What are your thoughts on that? So, look, the IRS is on my list of agencies that has become so politicized, sure. so toxic that you can't reform it top down. You actually have to shut it down and build something new to take its place from scratch. And I think this is just another example of an arm of the administrative state that has reached far too far. We need an executive in the White House who actually runs the executive branch of the government. They actually treat the U.S. president and publicly elected officials as though they're polite little inconveniences wielding power of their own. We need to put agencies like the IRS back in their place, subject to democratic accountability. That's what it actually means to live in a constitutional republic rather than an autocracy. And that's what we need to restore. Thank you. Vivek uh, and his friends. Vivek, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Good to see you. Live from New Hampshire. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Coming up here after the break, Democrats seek to destroy the only institution.